Doc Jones here uh, from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. We're really excited everybody could come. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit tonight about the school, the Homegrown Herbalist School and the new platform on Homestead Academy. And uh, I'm glad you could make it. We're really excited to have everybody here. And glad to be able to show folks uh, what we're up to and, and how it all works. A lot of you are new students. Um, and we're going to give you kind of some pointers on how to get around in the website. And a lot of you aren't students yet. And uh, we, I know a guy that can help you fix that. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll show you sort of a little look behind the scenes, a little peek under the bushel, and you can see what the school's like. Um, the school uh, started a lot of years ago, um, and it just sort of happened by accident. I didn't intend to start an herb school. I started using herbs in my veterinary practice and was astonished at some of the things I could do with these really common plants and got really into it. And I got this sort of evangelical zeal to teach other people about herbs. Um, and so I started writing articles and I started giving lectures and pretty soon they're asking me to come to conferences and give lectures. And so I'm going to conferences and giving lectures. Um, and then people started getting after me to write a book. And so I wrote a book. And uh, that's the Homegrown Herbalist. And uh, then people started getting after me to start a school. And I says, no, 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 no. We're, I'm not going to start a school. I mean, I'm a veterinarian. I'm a one-man practice. Uh, I'm on call 24-7 all the time. And uh, I don't have time to write a vet school. I was also running a, I mean, I had an online Irish flute store in those days. Uh, a lot of things were going on. Um, in fact, I was also running a nonprofit corporation to take care of an orphanage down in Haiti. So, <laughs> and had a lot of kids. So, you know, a lot of, lot of irons in the fire. Um, but they kept after me and kept after me. And I'd say, look, I can, I mean, I might get a lesson done every month, maybe every two or three months, I might get a lesson done. And people said, we don't care. We'll pay in advance and just do it, you know, as, as life allows. And, and they started writing me checks for this school that didn't exist. Uh, and so then I felt sort of committed to doing it for them because they paid for it. And uh, <laughs> anyway, the school, over the years, I got all the lessons done. And well, I'll never get all the lessons done, but I got a lot of lessons done. And we're now at a point where the school really is complete, whatever that means. I still add material and content all the time. I mean, I put up five or six really great little single plant lessons today just for fun because I wanted to. Um, and I learn new things. I'm not done learning stuff. We'll have an interesting case. I'll discover a wonderful mushroom that did this cool thing or, or a new action for an herb I've been using forever. And we put all that stuff in the school. And so um, it's, it's an organic, living, growing, continuously thing uh, just because that's, that's the way it works. Um, but we've been through various you know, computer platforms and websites. We started out on a program called Canvas, which is a, um, a software program that lots of universities use, lots of big businesses use it. Very functional, very utilitarian, uh, astoundingly boring. <laughs> but, you know, super functional for what they're doing, which is, you know, most of what they're doing is integrating computer work with college courses, right? And so it has to be real techie and stuff. Uh, we obviously weren't using it for that. But uh, it just wasn't doing a lot of the things that we would like to do. Um, and so my son, Evan, who's our IT guy, actually came to me one day and he says, you know, Dad, this website doesn't do any of the stuff I want to do. He says, I'm going to write you a new website. And he created this new website, uh, homegrownerblist.net. Uh, and for the commercial side... And then he got busy creating a new website for the school. And so we have uh, two astonishingly good websites because of his work. Uh, and we're just really grateful to him. But anyway, let's, let's kind of look at it. So I said we have two websites, right? We have a commercial website, which is homegrownerbliss.net. And then we have the school platform, which is homesteadacademy.com. And let's just look at both of those, okay? So we'll start, let's go to homegrownerbalist.net first. Um, and if you type homegrownerbalist.com or .org or .anything else, it'll pull up this website. I own all those variants. 
Um, but homegrownherbalist.net is the website. And this is the commercial side. So this is where we sell herbs. We sell herb powders. We sell single herb powders. We sell single herb tinctures. We sell formulas uh, of herbs in various forms, tinctures, powders. Uh, we sell essential oils. We sell, um, you know, kits, herb kits, some really great herb kits. Uh, anyway, just lots of things. And you can see here, uh, there's all these different categories of things. Now, if you're enrolled in the school, you're automatically, you'll automatically get an account on this website based on the email you used to sign up for the school. You'll still have to create a password here on homegrownerbalist.net, but it'll know who you are when, when you show up. And the reason for that is that students get some discounted pricing on things. Uh, events are especially inexpensive for students. We do a lot of live events. You know, we'll do a plant walk uh, or a medicine making workshop or a wound management workshop or whatever, any kind of workshop you can think of we're doing. Um, and students come for those live things if they're close enough and want to do that. Uh, all that content is also on the school recorded. So you don't have to live in the Mountain West to, to do the school. Um, we have students all over the planet. I mean, every single continent except Antarctica has homegrown herbalist students. You know, we have students in South Africa and Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I have students in the Ukraine. I have students in Europe, all over Great Britain. Israel, South America, Central America, Canada, Minnesota. I mean, lots of weird, weird places. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's all right. I used to live in Minnesota. Anyway, uh, so, you know, what was I talking about? Oh, live events. So students that can and want to come to a live event can, and they're very, very inexpensive for the students. And your pricing will show up automatically. The student pricing will show up if you're a student on the commercial site. The other fun thing is uh, if you hover over here, our online school, you know, you can obviously click here and learn about the school and get signed up. Uh, you can click here and buy books and things um, of mine. But over here, you'll see there's also a section called student VIP discounts uh, because sometimes we have special sales just for the students that are, you know, really marked down, really good values on things. And, you know, it's things that, you know, maybe I have more of it than I want. Uh, maybe I want to, you know, change a label or change an ingredient and do something and, and we're going to discontinue one. Uh, we'll put those things on a drastic sale and the students can get those really, really inexpensively. The This homegrownerbalist.net, the commercial site, also has a blog. Um, you can click on the blog and there's all kinds of articles on all kinds of things uh, that, have been, been written by myself or by the other instructors in the school. Um, and those are fun. Lots of times they have <clears throat> links to a video on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. And the blog's all, often linked to that. You can also go to the events page. And if we're having a live event, uh, it'll show up there. Or if we're having a virtual event. We also do virtual events, just like we're doing here, uh, where you can show up electronically and... Uh, we talk about all kinds of stuff. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So that's the commercial site, all right? Um, the other website is homesteadacademy.com. And the two websites, other than the commercial site, knowing that you're a student and loving you, uh, other than that, there's no connection between the two websites. You have to have a, an account on each one. Um, <clears throat> but let's go to homesteadacademy.com. So this is... Also, a brand new, well, not brand new, but fairly new website that, that we created. We own this website. It's not owned by or controlled by anybody but us. Um, and homesteadacademy.com is a platform for several schools, all right? My school, the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine, is here. Um, and if you <clears throat> click on courses, you can see what those are. We've got, this is the school, the main school, Homegrown Herbalist's. School of Botanical Medicine. Um, there's also the uh, When There Is No Doctor, which is really just a fractional uh, mini version of some of the content in the real school. Okay, so if you are in the, the main homegrown herbalist school, you don't need this one, okay, because everything in here is in here. Um, if you purchased this one and you want to upgrade to the real school, let me know and I'll give you a substantial discount because you already paid for some of it, right? Some of the stuff that's here is over here. 
We also have this school. This is the Resimax Therapeutics Institute. The Resimax tuner is a, a medical device uh, that uses vibration. It was designed by Sherrick Peck, who's a, a physical therapist and also has a master's degree in, in brain stuff. I can't even remember what it was in. Something cool about brains. So he understands <laughs> neurology and, and uh, physical therapy and, and things. And this instrument, this Resimax tuner, is an amazing tool. I mean, really cool. And and he actually has a little school here on that for folks that own one of those. Go to homegrownerbalist.net and just do a search for tuner and you'll find that instrument. And, and there's a webinar that Sherrick and I did called the Tune Out Pain webinar. It's on YouTube. But go to Go to homegrownerbalist.net and type tuner. It'll pull this up. You'll see the link to the webinar. Go watch that. Really a great thing. He's doing some astoundingly cool stuff with that instrument. Um, and there's, you know, FDA studies on it. Uh, there, there's studies from the American Dental Association on it for TMJ issues and other nerve things. Anyway, it's a legitimate thing. It's not some wonky naturopath thing. Okay, so um, the first thing you want to do, so here we are at Homestead Academy. This is the platform. And we're going to be adding other schools. I'm working on a school right now with a, a colleague of mine, Dr. Jed Adamson, who spent a lot of his life uh, riding an ambulance as an EMT, an advanced EMT. He also was the director of emergency medical services for Jerome County, Idaho. So he understands what do you do when there's a real accident uh, and what can you do until the ambulance comes. And we're going to be putting that school up probably in the next couple of weeks. It's almost finished. Um, and that's a completely separate school. That's not part of any of these other schools. It'll have separate enrollment and separate content. It's not an herb school. It's an emergency trauma, what do you do now school. Uh, and there's a little bit of herb dabbly stuff in there because I'm an herb dabbly guy. But a lot of it's just, you know, how do you stabilize, stabilize this guy till the ambulance comes. Um, anyway, that's going to be a cool school. So lots of other schools. We hope to have lots of other schools too here on all kinds of other homesteading topics you know, the whole purpose of this platform is to preserve knowledge that shouldn't be getting lost. You know, our grandparents knew how to do all kinds of stuff uh, that we don't know how to do anymore. And we don't want to be the generation that drops the ball and doesn't know how to be self-reliant, doesn't know how to be self-sufficient, doesn't know how to solve problems uh, without running to somebody else for help and paying them money for some artificial thing that's going to fix it. You know, uh, it's... it's uh, sort of a passion of ours to to keep the ball from being dropped by our generation on self-reliance. So lots of homesteading topics, lots of self-reliance, lots of natural medicine. Okay, so anyway, that's homesteadacademy.com. What we're going to do up here is we're going to log in and uh, so you just put in your username and your password. And now, now I'm logged in because see it says I can log out, right? So if I logged in, if I can log out, I must be logged in. So now I can go back to courses <clears throat> and it will show me that I'm enrolled in this school, right? And I'm enrolled in this school. It looks like I'm not enrolled in this school. Actually, I am because I wrote that school. But, you know, if I'm already in a school, it'll say continue study. If I'm not, it'll say enroll now and I can purchase that school if I want to. All right. But let's go ahead and get into, so this is the Homegrown Herbal School of Botanical Medicine. Now we're leaving the general platform. We're going into the actual school. We're just going to click Continue Study. And here it is. So this is the school. And I just want to show you around a little bit. All right. This, uh, these over here are the categories of lessons. All right. So we have getting started, getting finished, and navigating. Those are just lessons on the, the mechanics of the website. You know, how do I do this? How do I do that? Um, then there's a section on general herbalism. And there's 10 lessons in that section. If we click on this little arrow, it'll show us all the lessons in that section, right? So we've got learning the lingo, herb forms and dosing, principles of herbal therapy, ethics and legalities of herbal practice. In other words, how do you practice as a clinical herbalist without getting thrown in the hooskow for practicing medicine without a license? Okay. There's not a single state in the United States that I'm aware of that licenses herbalists. But there are also, as far as I know, 
and I don't know everything, but as far as I know, there isn't a state that won't let you practice as an herbalist as long as you behave. And so we'll teach you how to behave. We'll teach you how to uh, understand how to stay within the parameters of the law and stay out of stepping on other people's toes and still practice good uh, clinical herbalism without causing any problems for yourself legally or for your clients. So that's a good one. Um, we talk about cleanses in this section. We talk about uh, lots of other things. Anyway, the next section is body systems, function, dysfunction, and herbal interactions. So there's 27 lessons in this section. If you double click on the section head over here, it'll pull up a bigger vision of that. So, all right, so we've got the cardiovascular system. We've got the digestive system. There's four lessons on that. A couple of lessons on the female reproductive system. A couple on the male reproductive system, uh, although that one's way less complicated. Um, <laughs> uh, there are one, two, three, four on the immune system. Okay. And so typically the way these work is um, you'll have, all, in the first lesson I'll cover anatomy and physiology. What is the body doing it, doing? How is it doing the things it's doing? Why is it doing the things it's doing? Right? Why does all that matter? The next lesson will typically be disease processes of that system. All right. Um, you know, I'll teach you about lungs and how lungs work and why they're doing what they do and why it matters. And then I'll teach you what uh, Pasteurella is doing to your lungs, what COVID is doing to your lungs, what respiratory parasites are doing to your lungs. And then I'll teach you about what the herbs can do. Okay, so you learn normal function, you learn pathology, and then you learn how the herbs are interacting so that you can solve problems with the herbs. We don't just give you a list of 100 plants and have you learn 15 things that each of those plants can do. That, that's silly. You know, what we do is we teach you what the plant's doing. So, for example, uh, cramp bark is an antispasmodic. It relaxes muscles. Okay, that's what antispasmodics do. So I can use cramp bark for a really bad cough because I can relax the muscles. I can use it for asthma because I'm going to relax muscles and open up the airways. I can use it for diarrhea because diarrhea is a function of too much pumping of your gut muscles. And so the water's not being reabsorbed in your colon like it's supposed to. Well, if we can tell those guys to have a nap, water gets reabsorbed. Now you don't have diarrhea. But if you understand cramp bark and what it's really doing, you can apply it to all kinds of stuff. Oh, I got a really sore back. I should take some cramp bark, right? Uh, I'm having menstrual cramps. I should take some cramp bark. I'm having uh, diarrhea. I should get some cramp bark. You know, it, it starts making sense all, the, all over the place. And we get more detailed about how it's doing things and, and why. Um, but, you know, just as an example. So let's just open one of these to show you also kind of what they look like. So this is the liver and gallbladder lesson. And this one was short enough that I poked all of them into one lesson. The liver is not as, uh, doesn't have as many things in it as the digestive system has. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the first thing is there will be a written lesson, okay? So this is sort of like a PowerPoint presentation. Um, you can make these full screen if you want to. But basically, it's, we're going to talk about anatomy and physiology of the, of the organ how it works, what it's doing. Um, then we'll get into disease processes. We'll get into what the herbs are doing. And then the last lesson will typically be just on the plants that affect that system. Okay. So, you know, we'll talk about what burdock is doing in the liver. We'll talk about what organ grape and milk thistle and yellow dock are doing in the liver. Okay. How they're helping the liver. And so specific to that system. Then there's also Underneath each of those lessons, there's a little button right here that says download the lesson PDF. And so you can click that and it'll deliver that document to your computer and you can then print up a hard copy if you want to. Or you can just keep them all on a hard drive somewhere. And that way, if you're ever in a place that has bad internet or if you're ever in a world that has no internet, you can have a hard copy and you can have a, a flash drive or a hard drive that's got them all on it and you can keep on doing your stuff. Um, we're in the process of also creating uh, written versions of all this so that you don't have to print them all up yourself. I mean, 
you can do that if you want to, certainly at, at your own speed and the ones you want to do. But everybody keeps begging us to do a written version. So we're probably going to do that. Um, and it'll probably be cheaper than the ink and paper and time it would cost you to do it. Okay. But if you want to buy that, you can. If you don't want to buy it, click the button. If we scroll down a little more, so we're still in this liver lesson, right? If we scroll down a little bit more, now uh, there's a video, okay? And you have this staggeringly handsome fellow jabbering about livers and gallbladders and weeds, okay? And basically, I'm going through the same uh, lesson, the same printed lesson, uh, but there's usually some stories and anecdotes and crazy things I remember while I'm yakking about it, right? That's just what happens. Um, but <clears throat> the videos were also, you, you can't really download the videos because they're too big and there's too many in it. I mean, the hardware you would need for that is not reasonable, okay? But we're going to and start making audio files of the videos because those are little and you could put those on a hard drive and listen to them. And really, for 99 percent of the videos there's nothing visual that matters you know I'm just going through the the slideshow and uh, you know if you want it to be just the same as the real video you could hold the paper you printed and jiggle it a little while you listen to me talking you know it'd be pretty much the same thing take way less computer space than a video file okay so there's the the written version there's the video version uh, sometimes there's other videos you know about the plant that good for the liver or about some other liver thing um, but the other thing that's interesting is now we come down here and there is a place here that you can ask specific questions about this lesson, okay? And it goes to the forum and there's a specific group, a little section on the forum just about this liver and gallbladder lesson. And you can say, hey, what did, what did you mean by slide 14 when you said such and such? And I'll tell you, right? Or you can email me and say, what do you mean on slide 14 when you said such and such? And I'll tell you. Or you can call me and ask me what I meant. What the heck are you talking about on slide 14? I have no idea. I don't even remember slide 14. But anyway, you have, as students, you have a lot of contact with me. Um, so that's, that's good. Then at the end of the lessons, there's a quiz. Okay, and it's just a little, usually 10-question quiz. It's open book. The primary purpose of the quiz is twofold. First of all, to show me you did the lesson so I can keep track, the computer can keep track of when you're done. And second of all, um, to reinforce what you learned. And you can retake that quiz as often as you want. All right. Um, now, when you complete the lesson, you can, up here there's a thing, this one says mark incomplete because I says I haven't done it. But if, it, if I, ha now it says mark complete, okay? So if I've never done this lesson and I finish it up, you look down here, here's the liver and gallbladder lesson and there's a little white circle here that's empty that means I haven't done that lesson yet and when I've done it I click mark complete that was great I liked it I'm done right and then if you watch I have to open the thing again anyway you can now see that the liver and gallbladder lesson has a little check mark so you can scroll down these and see, oh, I've, oh, there's one I haven't done, right? And jump in and do it. Um, you'll have, like I said, did I say? Maybe I didn't say. When you enroll in the Homegrown Herbal School, you have lifetime access to everything forever, all right? Um, I was actually down in Utah about last summer sometime, I think, and doing a conference down there, lecturing and stuff, and ran into this sweet lady who had signed up for another school and paid four or five thousand dollars, if I remember, for a school incidentally that has much less content than ours and hasn't done any new content since the 80s. Okay, great people, great content. I'm not bashing them at all, but it's not a living organic growing thing. Anyway, she paid quite a lot of money for it and then her husband got cancer and she spent a year helping her husband die of cancer. Okay, very sad thing. And that's all she did for a year was support him and love him and take care of him. And he passed away. Um, and then when the dust settled in her life, she went back to this other herb school to log in and start doing her herb school. And her time was up. And they wouldn't let her in. 
And she had spent, like I said, I think it was four or $5,000 and done, tough. They wouldn't let her in. I thought, oh my word. First of all, why would you even have a time limit? And second of all, if somebody had a situation like that, let them in, right? Anyway, uh, but it was a very sad deal. If she'd been in our school, which she is now, I think, um, that wouldn't have happened, okay? Uh, she would have lifetime access forever. And if something comes up, something comes up. Stuff comes up. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, but uh, our school, you can do it at any rate you want. There are no time constraints whatsoever of any kind. You can do it as life allows. You know, life is a journey, not a race. And uh, you'll have access forever. And like I said, I'm always adding new stuff anyway. Um, the other reason, in my opinion, as a guy who runs an herb school, that it's really dumb to have students graduate and go away is because why the heck would you want to get rid of them when they're smart, when they know stuff, right? We have a forum on the school, which I'll show you in a minute. We have a forum where we talk about all kinds of stuff. And some of my students have herb schools of their own little programs locally that they're doing and have been in practice for a lot of years and have seen all kinds of cool stuff. And why don't I want those guys on my forum? Right? They can answer some of the questions and I don't have to. <laughs> it's just trick, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's why we, we want to keep that community. We want to we want to build and grow and keep learning from each other. Um, and why the heck would we say, no, no, you learned all your stuff, go away. We don't that's not how it works here. Okay, you'll be in forever. Uh, I was gonna call it the Hotel California School of Botanical Medicine. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. But uh, it didn't really roll off the tongue like homegrown herbalist did. Okay, so where are we at? So we did uh, body systems. The next category of lessons is illnesses, issues, and herbal interactions, all right? So, you know, I can talk about the digestive system. I can talk about, you know, the respiratory system, but I also want to talk about wound management. I also want to talk about pain management, and those aren't specific system-specific things, okay? And so we have a lesson just on first aid. We have lessons just on allergies. Uh, we have lessons like one, two, three, four of them just on pain management. I think there's five just on wound management. We have a lesson on uh, venomous bites and stings. We have a lesson on cancer, a couple of lessons on cancer. Um, we have all those lessons are in this category, okay? Um, so, the next category is veterinary herbalism because I also am a veterinarian. So I was a veterinarian for about 30 years um, and I did everything. I mean, I did dairy cows, I did swine operations, I did goats, I did beef cows, I did ostrich farmers, I did parrot breeders, um, I did dogs and cats and I mean, anything you can think of, I probably did it at some point in my career. Uh, and so I've had a lot of experience and a lot of exposure, and I've used herbs on a lot of things. You know, I did poultry farms. I had turkey and chicken producers, too, that I worked with sometimes. Anyway, been there, done that with herbal medicine and veterinary medicine. Um, and so this is that section. A lot, and the only reason I created this section is because nobody believes me when I say it's just the same as the humans. <laughs> so it really is almost the same thing. Uh, but there are some specifics, and, and I talk about veterinary things all through all the other lessons. You know, so when we're in the digestive system lesson, I talk about colic in horses, because people don't get colic like horses do, right? It's different. I talk about parvo in dogs, because people don't do that, you know. Um, and so if there's a significant difference, I'll talk about it in those body system lessons, all right, or those disease lessons. Um, but I I also have this veterinary section, and I'm actively putting a lot of stuff in here too. You know, somebody asked me for, what do you do for hot spots in dogs? And so I'm just gonna do a little lesson on hot spots in dogs. Uh, you know, what do you do for, you know, this or that or the other thing? I'm gonna do one on mastitis. I mean, I was a, I did a ton of mastitis work for 30 years. I, in fact, for a long time ran a milk lab and we were running, you know, sometimes 5,000 cultures a month through the milk lab. And then I would go do consultations with the dairyman and say, look, this is what's going on. You gotta cut it out, do this, do this, do that, right? So be good to have a lesson on that. Um, and what do you do herbally for that? So anyway, there are some more specific things that will be in here in the veterinary section, but most of it's spread out through all the other sections. 
Um, then there's the next section is the individual plant lessons. And there's 115 of these. And there's about that many that are this close to being put up. I put up a half dozen of them today just because I wanted to up, do some aesthetic stuff to them. Um, but, you know, we've got all these individual plants. And so typically, let's see, let's go to, let's go to Barberry. So the individual plant lessons will typically be like this. They will have what we call the quick view. The quick view is the quick and dirty flashcard version. I just got to know what this plant's for. I don't remember. Or I'm out in the woods. What the heck does it look like? Is this the one? How many leaves did it have? Right? So that's the quick view. Short and sweet. Uh, very concise, concentrated information. They're usually only three or four slides long. Okay? We talk about the uses. We talk about how what it looks like, uh, how you grow it, how you harvest it. Just very short, very concise. And again, you can download that and print it. All right? Then we typically, not always, because some plants just need a quick view. But a lot of them, we can go a lot deeper. This monograph is the next thing. So a monograph is a much bigger project on that plant. And I did Barberry and Oregon Grape together because they're the same thing. I mean, medicinally and genetically, for that matter, they're so similar that there's no reason to do them both separate. Uh, so I did them both in the same lesson. But this uh, this is probably a two-hour video that goes with this lesson. You know, we get really deep into bar Oregon Grape and Barberry. Uh, so if you want the quick view, uh, you know, what did he say I use this for? Or where did he say it grows? You know, then you use this one. If you want to really dig in to way more com deeper subjects, you go to the monograph. And uh, again, you can download a PDF of the monograph, which is the printable version. And then there's a video of the monograph, right? Where we're going to talk about, basically, I'm going to go through this lesson, all right? And there's often other videos, especially on the plant lessons. That, you know, I'll be out in my yard jabbering about Oregon Grape or Barberry. And I'll do a little video about it for YouTube, and I put those up here, too. And again, remember, you can ask questions down here just about this lesson, if you want to. And then there's a quiz. Um, now, the next section, so those are the individual, individual plant lessons. Um, the next section is plant walks. We've got videos of, of me on plant walks, uh, you know, out and about, puttering around. We've got nine videos on medicine making, you know, so we do lotions and salves and poultices and tinctures and glycerites and yada, yada, yada. We have a, a long lesson on each of those in depth where I show you how to do it. All right. Um, we have lessons on herbal gardening. You know, my place in, in Buell had probably 150 medicinal plants on it. And, and we show you how we were doing that on an acre and a half. Okay. And so, Anyway, there's live webinars, there's case studies. These are cool. And we're going to be doing more with case studies. I, I started out doing case studies and I was doing, I would do a case study with somebody because I'm a naturopath too, okay? So I had the veterinary practice and I had the naturopathy practice and, and I'm still doing consulting and interaction in both those areas. But, you know, if you were, sick, if you were a dog, you go to this building and if you were just sick as a dog, you go to the other building. We'd square you away one way or the other. But I, would, I wrote up some of those cases, and they were big, long write-ups, uh, you know, showing the process of what did we do with this guy. And, uh, and they were great, but it was a lot of work to do that big write-up, and most of the material that was in the big write-up was in all the other lessons. You know what I mean? Because the same guy wrote it. <laughs> so if you have this problem, that's probably what he's going to do. It's in that lesson. And so instead of doing that, I've been thinking... Uh, you know, I need to be writing other lessons and other things and not just writing up these big case studies. And I and I had this little light bulb moment and I thought, you know what? Why don't we just do live webinars on those for the students, you know? And so we're going to start doing live webinars and I'll bring you the case and I'll say, you know, this is Sally and Sally's got, you know, I don't know, Crohn's disease. And, and then I'm going to say, what are you going to do? What do you think we should do? I'll give you the whole history and all this story. And then you tell me what you think you're going to do, and we'll talk about it. Well, why do you think that? And why is that a great idea? Maybe is that not a great idea? You know, and we together will learn in sort of a more uh, organic, engaging way 
how to get through a case and figure out how to help somebody, how to ask questions. What questions do you ask, right? What information do you really need? And so that's that's going to be really fun. We're going to be doing those uh, a lot more. I'm hoping to do live webinars on case studies and other things at least once a month and maybe twice a month uh, moving forward, probably starting in uh, February or March with that. Um, anyway, so if you're a student, those will all be free and they'll all be recorded because the nice lady that lives in Australia isn't going to get up at three in the morning and watch that. Right? Sometimes they do. <laughs> They're very dedicated in Australia. But, uh, you know, if you can't or if you're working or whatever, they're all recorded and we'll put them in the school. Okay, they're all going to go in this case studies files. Anyway, um, there's also games and there's fun things to help you learn plant names and Latin names. And, you know, there's just fun, silly stuff too. Now, let me show you some other really, really cool things. If So those are the lessons, all right? Now, if we go over here, you'll see that it says, hello, tester. Now, if you were George, it would say, hello, George. And if you'd put your picture in your profile, it would say, hello, George, and show you a picture of you in case you forgot what you looked like. But if you hover over this, where it says your name, it pulls up this drop-down menu. See that? So it wasn't there. And they hover, and there it is, right? And so this is where a lot of really magic, amazing, great stuff happens. Uh, first of all, there's amazing search tools, okay? Um, <clears throat> we have, let's just do this, quick search. The fastest way to find anything in the school. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, geez, I'd love to do the school someday, but I can't do it right now. You don't have to do it right now. Search for what you want. You'll have it in 10 seconds, okay? So this quick search only searches lesson titles, okay? So if I said Birch, it'll pull up all the Birch things, okay? So there's here's a, a plant, single plant lesson on Birch. Here's a plant walk of me in a place called Birch Canyon. I'll pull that up because it's in the lesson title, okay? That's a really fast way to find things. And you'll notice that I spell birch, B-I-R-C-H-J. Birch, J, birch, J. Anyway, <laughs> the computer doesn't care. He knows what you meant. All right, this is a really, really amazing search tool. The other thing, if we go up here, is you, if you don't find it in the lesson title, like you're probably not going to find, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, a lesson on periodontal disease right? That's going to be in a lesson. It's not going to be the name of the lesson, okay? And we do talk about periodontal disease in the upper digestive lesson because your chompers are part of your upper digestive system. Anyway, so if it's something like that, you click here on advanced search, and that takes you to a place where you have all kinds of tools. The first one is the one we just did, the title search, right? The second one is a content search, all right? So if you typed here, uh, if you said periodontal it'll pull up every lesson that has that word in it okay and so you know well what are all these lessons well look at this these are individual plants that are very very good for periodontal disease this is the heart lesson well what's that got to do with periodontal disease well if you have really bad periodontal disease you shed bacteria to your bloodstream they get on your heart valves and cause heart disease that's why we talked about that one um, mouth and tooth formulas. I have a formula for uh, periodontal disease. It's in that formula lesson. Did I show you that? There's a whole category of formula lessons, too. I forgot to find. It's over there somewhere. You know, every formula I ever made is in the school. And use them. Fix things. Uh, anyway, here in the upper digestive system. But all of these lessons talk about periodontal disease. And you can figure out, well, it's probably the one I'm looking for is this upper digestive one. Go to that one. Okay. But uh, all these other ones also have good information on periodologies. So you can search by titles or you can search by content. You can also search the forum. We have a student forum. Remember that? And so if I typed periodontal in here, it would pull up all the threads where we talked about periodontal disease on the forum. You know, my grandma has really bad periodontal disease. What can I do? Oh, we'll do this. Oh, yeah, that worked. I also did this, and it worked really good. And some other guy says, some other guy will say, oh, you know what I do for that? That works fantastic. This one, you know. And so you get this back and forth exchange of experience and knowledge and information. Fantastic. Okay, so you can search the form, search the title, search every single lesson in place by word that's in the lesson, uh, or search. 
the forum. That's cool. And then the last thing, option number four, is Herbert. And Herbert is a little AI robot that Evan uh, put together in his laboratory one night, and he had the electrodes up so the lightning could hit him, and Herbert came alive. And so we've got this little robot. Uh, <laughs> it's artificial intelligence, but I, I hate using artificial intelligence search engines on the real Internet because who knows where they're going to pull stuff from. You know what I mean? It's just a search engine. I mean, they pretend they're talking to you and know stuff, but they don't. It's just a search engine that you can engage with with normal language. No, you know, so you can say, hey, search engine, uh, what do you know about this? And it'll pull up things. But it just pulls up random things from who knows where, right? And I don't want information from some blogger that doesn't know diddly do about anything to do with that plant. I want real research. I want real experienced guys. I want people that know stuff. And guess what? They're, uh, this search engine, this AI, Herbert, is uh, the Herbal Enthusiast Retrieving Botanical Education Resources and Tidbits. That's what Herbert stands for. Um, <laughs> but his whole universe is my school. He doesn't know there's anything else out there. Okay. So if you ask Herbert something, you know, if you said, hey, Herbert, uh, what's good for toenail fungus? He would tell you what's good for toenail fungus based on what he read in the school. Okay. Um, so it's a much better, it's still not perfect because he's just a search engine. Right. But the good news is he'll tell you where he read it. <laughs> you can go to that list and say, what is that what he meant? Right. Anyway, just another fun. Herbert's sort of a fun toy, really. But sometimes it's a quick, easy way to get something answered if you can't figure out how to ask the question for the other search engines. OK. Anyway, those are the search options. Um, if we hang, hover over our name again, we go to the student forum and we can click on that and that'll take us to the forum. All right. Now, the forum is where we're all talking to each other about all kinds of cool things. So let's go over there. So this is the forum. And there's all kinds of different categories. There's medicinal herbs, there's medicine making, there's plant identification, right? And so if we click on medicine making, what did I click on? Yep. And so here's, here's, uh, just a bunch of topics, and we can get into one of those. Here's one on hops, okay? And we can get into those, and people are asking questions about hops, and what's it good for, and I tried this, and I tried that, and where can I get some good seeds, right? And I've answered, and Greg answered, all kinds of people. Carl answered, Carrie answered. Anyway, there's all kinds of exchange and communication on the forum, too. So if you can't find it in the school, go over to the forum, and let's talk about it. Uh, I would ask, Pretty please, with sugar on top, look in the school first, okay? Because we probably already talked about it there. Do a search for hops. You know, don't go to the forum and say, hey, what's hops for? Because <laughs> it's in the school, okay? Now, just to let A.B. off the hook, it wasn't in the school when she wrote this. I put that lesson up that day. So <laughs> she's all right. Anyway, but if you have any questions, put them on the forum. And if it's already in the school, I'll just put up a link and say, hey, it's over here. Okay. Anyway, the forum's really, really a great tool, too. Even if you finished the school, join us on the forum and hang out. That's great. All right. Now, let me show you a couple of other things that are really exciting that are just coming up in the school. Um, there are some very different things about this school. First of all, the content and the depth of the content is very different than most herbal schools because of my background and the background of the other professors. Okay. We have myself, I'm a licensed veterinarian for 30, over 30 years. I was also a, a naturopath and a clinical herbalist. We have my wife, Laurieann Jones, who's also a naturopath. We went to naturopath school together and she's also a midwife and an herbalist. Okay. It was a practicing midwife for years. Um, we have Jenny Lee Rose, who's a good herbalist. We have, and is my daughter, so she's been around herbs for a long time. We have Lucy, also my daughter, who's a uh, naturopath too, went to naturopathy school and is a great herbalist, and she runs the whole company. She's the general manager of the whole company. Um, we also have Dr. Brandon Rose, who has a physiology PhD. He's a professional researcher. And so we have a depth of understanding 
of science things and practical things that a lot of herbalists just don't have. And we also have the veterinary stuff, which most herbalists don't have. Okay, what do you do for, for this in a dog? What do you do for this in a llama or a chicken? Okay, most herb schools aren't covering that. And because of the veterinary practice, I was able to do things that nobody gets to do. You know, you can go to any other herb school and do a search on gangrene and see how many things come up. Do a search on gunshot wounds, see how many things come up. You know, because I was in the trenches, I was the ER for 30 years and I saw everything and I treated most of it with herbs. Okay, and so I know very well what you can do with a really horrific wound. I know very well what you can do with a rattlesnake bite because I treated a lot of them. All right, and so it's a different, it's a whole different thing. You know, it's a real in the trenches, roll up your sleeves and let's practice medicine kind of a program. Um, now, there's a couple of things that are going to happen that are really cool. One is, well, one's already done. And that is that we have also a lesson on uh, safety of herbs during pregnancy and lactation. Okay, So you can go in there and you can look up any herb you can think of and it'll tell you whether it's safe to take that one if you're pregnant and whether it's safe to take it if you're nursing. Because guess what? There's some herbs that mom can take and be perfectly safe, but if she's nursing a baby, it can be very damaging to the baby. Okay, And that's important, right? And so that pregnancy and nursing safety section, hugely important and hugely valuable. Um, we're also doing a lesson, a series of lessons. Dr. Rose and myself are doing a series of lessons on pharmaceuticals and herbs. And nobody's doing that. Okay. And, and we understand the pharmacology because they made us go to doctor school for years and years and years and sit in dark rooms and look at slides of molecules that do things. Okay, and so we understand the pharmacology and we understand the phytochemistry of the plants. And so we understand, hey, you better not take this one if you're taking that one. Sometimes herbs and drugs don't play well at all together. Sometimes they play beautifully together. Sometimes they play too well together. Okay, if you're taking insulin, you don't want to take an herb that also lowers your blood sugar, right? If you're taking an herb that needs to be in your system for 12 hours, you don't want to take any burdock with that because it'll make you eliminate the herb too fast right? Because your liver will work better. Now, there's all kinds of nuances of pharmaceuticals and herbs that we're covering. And that's the first question I always ask when I do a consult for somebody, what meds are you taking? And it, and it occurred to me, well, holy cow, how is anybody else going to know that? How that all works? And so I'm putting it in the school. And uh, we're well into it, It'll probably be done here pretty quick. Um, so that's an amazing thing that no other herb school has anything like that, okay? There's not any other herb school that you could type lisinopril in the search engine and it would tell you what herbs not to take with that, okay? So that's cool. The other thing is we're developing a, um, a tool. It's sort of like a search engine, but this is a, a new, brand new tool. We just created this like last week, um, and it's still, it's still in the works. We're not finished with it. Um, the structure of it's done. And one of my students, uh, Greg Boggs, who's a great guy, on the forum, he said, I made this spreadsheet of the herbs and all their actions so they can kind of have it all in one place. And I thought, wow, oh, that's a good idea. And Evan, the IT guy, said, wow, Greg, can I steal that? And Greg says, yeah. And Evan took it and expanded it and did all kinds of computery robot stuff to it. So now it's this phenomenally searchable thing. Uh, and you can, on this page, type in that I need uh, an analgesic. I need an anodyne. Let's go for an anodyne. What the heck's an anodyne? That's why you take the learning the lingo lesson. Uh, an anodyne is one you put on your gums because your tooth hurts. Okay. So if I click on that, it now pulls up herbs that are good anodynes. Okay. The two best ones are cloves and yarrow root. All right. You can also go over here. Oh, and if I go down here, let's say I click on cloves. All right. It, well, let's pick something else. Okay, we're going to click on burdock. If I click on burdock, like I said, it's not all the way done. If I click on burdock, it gives you all kinds of quick overview of burdock, very much like that quick view lesson did, right? It also gives you a button so you can go to the lesson on burdock, all right? And so, you know, if you need an antiviral, 
you can just type that in here and it'll pull up 15 antivirals and you can look at them specifically, see which one you want. Uh, you can also do it in reverse order. You can say, um, I don't know, let's look at California Poppy. If we click on that, it pulls up California Poppy and it tells you what its actions are right here, right? But it also gives you the safety stuff, the drug interaction stuff, the dosage, okay? Anyway, it's another kind of cool, I got this problem, what can I do? Search engine, all right? Anyway, that's fun. So, uh, let's see. Anyway, those are in process. So, um, like I said, the school is uh, lifetime enrollment. Um, the We're adding new material all the time, and people are really enjoying it. I have a lot of students. I don't even know how many students I have. I have a lot of students all over the world, and I mean, like, probably 5,000 students. And I've never had a single one of them say, you know, I don't know, Doc, this isn't really what I want. It's not really as good as I want. Can I get a refund? Not one out of 5,000. That's pretty good, right? And I have physicians, I have nurses, I have chiropractors, I have people that have graduated from other prominent herb schools, and they're all loving it. So maybe that's a good, uh, maybe that's a good report. Um, anyway, that's the herb, uh, the herb school. The herb school right now, the Home Herbal School of Botanical Medicine, is going to be going up in price pretty significantly uh, in January 16th, I believe is the date, um, because it's costing us more money to do it. And it's now at a place where I'm not apologizing that it isn't finished, right? <laughs> like I did for a couple of years in the beginning. It's been in that place for a long time. I just haven't gotten around to raising the price. But it's costing money. You know, we have, you know, five instructors. We have a full-time IT guy. We have full-time people editing videos and creating, you know, formatting and editing lessons and things so they can be put up. Uh, we have just purchased uh, equipment to house all of our own videos so that they can't be restricted or goofed around with by anybody ever, okay? Because they're in my closet instead of some guy in, you know, New York's closet full of computers, okay? Um, so we're, you know, we have expensive recording equipment. We have all kinds of things. There's just, it costs money to do things. And so uh, we're raising the price a little bit. Well, no, we're raising the price a lot. But right now, uh, the price is a little less than, a little more than half of what it'll be January 16th. So January 16th, 2024, we'll be raising the price. This would be a very, very good time to get in. Even if you're not going to do it right now. Like I said, you have lifetime enrollment. Even if you just use it as a reference resource, that when you got a toenail fungus, what the heck do I do, right? And you didn't have time to go through all the lessons formally and get your certificate of completion, you know, great. Get it now and do all that later if you want. But it's a great resource. Um, we really, really are passionate about doing a fabulous job with it. And uh, we are passionate about having our students come away saying, wow, I can really do this. I had a student just, you know, to close, I had a student that graduated from one of the most renowned, best known herb schools in the country. And a very good herb school, great people, great, you know, the, the old founder guy was this astoundingly good herbalist, great guy. I have nothing bad to say about the school, okay? She joined our school and was in it for not very long at all and said, oh my gosh, this is what I needed. This is what I needed because this is teaching me how to actually do it. Instead of just filling my head with lists and stuff and information, it's showing me how the heck to do it. And she was deliriously happy. And so, and I've had that comment from a lot of people that have been through other programs. So if you're looking for a program that's deeply comprehensive, has a lot of science, that's presented in ways that you can understand it without a PhD or a doctorate in medicine, then uh, I think you'd find this to be a really good fit. All right, so I'm Dr. Patrick Jones. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's do some questions. We've got a little Q&A here. And uh, let's get to some of those.
Mindy Noker says, so many schools I've looked at are very spiritual or reference the moon and the stars. I'd love to find a class that's more faith-based. Any thoughts on those already registered? Uh, I'm registered, so I'll go ahead and answer that. Um, we, I don't discuss anything. Uh, I'm interested in the science, okay? And I'm a, you know, I believe in God and I, believe in his only begotten son and he's my savior and wow i'd be nothing without him and i'll occasionally give him credit for inventing something really cool uh, and make references like that but we don't talk about anything with wiccanism or other religious things or other you know it's like i was talking about with the chinese herbalism before we just don't talk about the religious elements of it some people are very uh bothered by it and frankly it's not medicine. We're talking about medicine. Okay, so we're we're faith based, uh, and we don't talk about you know how to pray to the tree, or how to pray to Aphrodite. You know, but we but we don't preach either. You know, it's not an evangelical school. And if you're a Baptist and not a Presbyterian, or, we love you anyway. You know, we don't care what church you're in. We don't care if you're a, a Jewish fellow or a Muslim fellow, or if you don't know what to be, well, we don't care. We love you anyway. And uh, so we don't do, you know, I, I stay away from religious topics for those reasons. Because you know what? If a nice Hindu guy wants to learn about herbs, Western herbalism from a veterinarian, I'm not going to beat him up religiously about that. You know what I mean? Anybody of any faith could feel really comfortable in a school. If I do ever say anything religious, it's it's probably Christian, but it's not evangelically proselyty. Does that make sense? Anyway, we don't talk about getting in touch with your inner, you know, ninja reincarnated warrior. We just, we talk about antispasmodics, so that's good. Okay. Uh, we don't have any new age stuff. I'm an old age guy. I'm getting gray. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, let's see. People that are excited. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Love, 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 Doc Johns. I'm an RN and just love adding to my knowledge and applying. You know, we have a lot of RNs in the school. We have a lot of chiropractors in the school. We have a lot of physicians in the school. Um, we have a lot of people that aren't any of those things that are also really smart. We have a lot of really good gardeners in the school. <laughs> we have a lot of really experienced homesteaders in the school. So again, that forum is a tremendous, uh, tremendous resource. Teresa says, I reference Jesus many times. I do, I like Jesus. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, there's lots of other good things. Is there a payment plan? Yes. When you go to checkout, there's a payment plan. Um, let's see. There's another religious one. It helps in understanding how he wrote of faith in his book. I appreciate the insight. Yeah, okay. So, yep, I do. I do. I mention things, but I don't do it in a denominational way that would you know, make somebody feel bad. All right. Um, anything else here? There's a lot of school stuff here. All right. I've already cleared off two shelves to make room for the salves and tinctures that I'm growing and making. <laughs> Good for chemo. All right. Um, All right. Uh, the Stelwick Garden Club says, thanks for the wonderful work to offer this intensive course. I will be signing up to become educated by Dr. Jones. Uh, glad to hear it. I would certainly encourage you to do that before January 16th, 2024, because there will be a significant price increase. Um, the school has been absurdly inexpensive for many, many, many years. Uh, and part of that was because it wasn't done for many years. I was still trying to get the dumb thing together. Uh, but because of the resources we're putting into it now, 
we have five faculty members. We have a full-time IT guy. We have, uh, you know, mountains of equipment and computers and video and audio equipment and, you know, services we have to pay for to host videos. And, uh, you know, I just spent really a lot of money buying all kinds of computers to host my own videos. Anyway, it's costing money to do things. Um, but honestly, you know, at the current price, it isn't that much. It's it, even at the new price that's going to be almost twice what the current price is. It isn't much compared to other schools. There are schools out there that are four or five thousand dollars that don't begin to approach the level of information we have and don't give you lifetime access. You know, I was talking to a lady down in I was down in Utah doing a conference, uh, an herb conference, and this sweet lady was talking to me and said uh, that she had signed up for another very prominent, well-known school. If I said the name of it, you'd go, oh, my gosh, yeah, I know them. And I'm not going to say the name of it because they're nice people. But she signed up for the school, paid them like, I can't remember, four or $5,000. And then her husband got cancer, and she spent, you know, I don't remember how long she said, a year or something or two, helping her husband get through this horrible cancer, and he passed away. And then, you know, the dust settled and life got back to normal and she could do something again for herself. And she went to get into this school she'd paid all this money for and couldn't get in. And they wouldn't let her in because her time was up. And she called them and said what happened. They said, that's very sad. You can't come in because your time is up. So she spent, you know, 4000 I think it was, and got nothing. Okay, you won't have that experience with a homegrown or school. Uh, you pay... One time, you have lifetime access. 30 years from now, you'll still be able to get in. And all the new stuff that I'm putting up constantly, you'll have access to, okay? All the stuff in this school. Okay. Um, now people are saying the sound was bad. We got that part. Uh, are you going to move any of your content to another platforms in case YouTube gets weird about your content? Um, if YouTube gets weird about my content, all my content's on the school. And there are plenty of other places. We're going to be hosting all of our own videos very soon. I mean, Evan's back there with a screwdriver putting the machines together right now. So we'll have our own content hosting anyway. We might make our own channel of our own stuff. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But no, I'm not scared of... YouTube doesn't, as long as you keep the silly rules, they're okay. Um, and if they decide that they're going to make new silly rules that are sillier, uh, maybe we move to somewhere else. But everything I do on YouTube, every video I've ever made is in the school. And it'll always be in the school. And nobody can shut that down. All right? <laughs> All right. Because that's privately owned stuff and they don't have control of that. Okay. Uh Okay, and he was talked about the acupuncture worry in her. We already talked about that. Don't worry about that. We don't, it's not a mysticism school. We don't talk about any of that stuff. We'll tell you that uh, Chinese people use Bacopa for this and Romania for that, and that's all. Okay. Uh, Clark, K. Clark says, I have used Herbert, the AI guy, and he's pretty helpful. Thanks, Evan. Um, other people saying that they like the school. Uh, yeah, Evan said Herbert got a bit overloaded. Everybody was talking to him at once, apparently. <laughs> so, anyway, he's working now if you want to ask him something. Okay. Okay, here we go. Deborah Francisco, here's a beautiful thing. She says, I understand. She's referring, talking to Iwa, who was sweet and was worried about the acupuncture. She says, I understand. I'm going to take the information on benefits of acupuncture of the muscles and the effects and the uses of massage or application that I'm comfortable with in using and that honors God, okay? That's that's how I do stuff. I learn stuff from people all the time that don't think anything I think about God. You know, I've learned really cool things that the Incas used to do with herbs because I used to live in South America, and those guys were praying to all kinds of things, right? But the plants they were using were doing things, and I'm delighted to learn that, Right? And so I think we need to be careful not to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, but we also need to be careful not to stick our head in the tub and inhale, right? So <laughs> I understand where he was coming from. Don't worry about it. That's not what we're doing here. Okay. Um, lots of other people joining the school. 
Um, Jade Phoenix says, I lived in China for a spell and saw some bad, some of the bad aspects of traditional Chinese medicine. And so I'm a bit jaded when it comes to it. But they have some stuff I could learn. Yeah. That's exactly it. That's it. There was an, a very nice old guy named Paul the Apostle a long time ago who said, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Okay. And sometimes uh, there's a real gem mixed up with all the ugly rocks that are dumb and don't mean anything. And so you take that. Say, oh, that's cool. I can use that. I don't need the other stuff. Okay. You make your own decisions about information. But I don't, you know, ban information because the person teaching it doesn't think what I think about something. That's, a, that's, that's not a good way to learn stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Jade is answering another question. See, this is why I have Jade. This is why we don't kick people out. They answer my questions. <laughs> she says, you get a ton of in-depth teaching on herbs. For example, two hours on burdock and comfrey and dandelion, two hours each on each of those plants. Plus in-depth teaching on all the different body systems, how herbs interact with them and more. So thanks, Jade, for answering that one. Um, so... Tonda says, I have a very pregnant niece with a lot of low back pain. Is mullein root safe for her? I know it kicks the crap out of my low back pain. Um, mullein leaf is safe during pregnancy. I have not used the root or seen studies on the root in pregnancy. So I'd probably be careful with that. What I would do instead is I would spray some hops tincture on it. That'll straighten it right out. And that is safe for pregnancy to use hops topically. Best thing in the world for pain. Try that. Um, you could also use cramp bark which is an antispasmodic, which will also work internally or topically. That's when safe for pregnancy. Okay. Ted Anders, Terry Anderson, will you be bringing an iridology course to your school? Um, not to the herb school. Uh, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure that we'll do that on the main platform. I'm, I'm, my jury's still out on iridology. Um, I don't know very much about it. We'll see if I, I'll look at it and look at the science and see if there's anything there. If it's just silly, I really don't know. If it's not silly, we'll look at it. Okay, Annette, I love your school. Left the School of Natural Healing to join you. Much more content and relevant with the illness newer than 1980. Plus education on how to treat our pets. Highly recommended. Yeah, that's one of the other big, big things is, uh, you know, I put up like probably 15 lettuces in the last 10 days on individual plants and did one on dog stuff, I mean, lots of things. The very top lesson in the school is called uh, New Things and Announcements. And if I ever do anything new, I put it in there. It's just a list of what I did, you know. It says, you know, January 10th, add a new quick view on, you know, Moringa or whatever plant, I don't know. Anyway, so if you want to see if there's anything new that you've missed, go to that lesson. Okay. Uh, the quizzes are easy. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention quizzes. There are quizzes in the school, and you can take them as often as you want. They're just to reinforce your learning. They're all open book. And if you flunk the quiz, take it again. You can take it 100 times. Uh, but they're mostly just, they do two things. First of all, they show me you finished the lesson. And second of all, uh, they reinforce important points. Okay. Uh, my daughter and I took your tincture class at PrepperCon years ago. Been hooked ever since. <laughs> Thanks for making the knowledge available to us. Yeah, PrepperCon's a big prepper convention they do out in Mountain West. Okay. Does the course cover dog hotspot treatment? Um, well, we have a lot of lessons on the skin, and I'll tell you what, Earth Zero Apothecary, I will do a lesson on dog hotspots tomorrow and put it on the school. That's the other fun thing, is if you tell me to do something, I do it. Uh, I had somebody in the forum today say, hey, we don't have a quick view on Ella campaign, so I'm going to do that tonight too, or not tonight, tomorrow. I have it done. I just need to put it up. <laughs> anyway, very, very interested in feedback and requests and what can we do for you, okay? Um, can you treat black widow bite with your herb formula? Yes, I have treated some black widow bites with it, um, with the venom and sting formula. It's specifically designed for rattlesnakes and hobo spiders and brown recluses, but it has good benefits for black widows too. Okay, how much veterinary content will you add in the future? Uh, I'll be adding a lot. 
I'm doing lots of little, and they're shorter, quicker, more specific lessons because all the other stuff's already there. I mean, I, I mean, there's already a hundred lessons on stuff. No, that's not right. There's already about 250 lessons if you include all the individual plants on stuff that you can use in your animals and how to do it in your animals. It's usually not different. But yeah, I'll do one on hot spots because people don't get those. I'll do one on horse colic. People don't get that, right? I'll do one on parvo. They'll be very specific animal lessons. I'll do one on chickens. I'll do one on mastitis. I've been doing, working on that one a little bit. I'll put that one up. I was a dairy vet for 20 years. I know about mastitis. Okay, um, let's see. How much discount do we get for buying products if you're a student? Like I said, if you go to that student discount area, you get big discounts. Otherwise, most of the discounts are on live events and things like that, school stuff. Okay, can you mix multiple tinctures together and drink it? Yes, you can. I do that almost every day for something. Been fighting a cold this week, and I am winning. I have zero symptoms all day. When it gets to be about 7 o'clock, I start thinking, am I getting a cold? And as long as I take my herbs, it'll knock it out, and I won't ever get the cold. But yeah, I'm taking four or five different tinctures. I pour them in a little, uh, little bowl and put some water in so it doesn't taste horrible, and down the hatch. Okay, uh, gastroparesis. Um, is there an herb I could use or maybe a tea that could help with that? There's a lot of herbs that can help with the gut. Um, send me an email on that. That's going to be a longer conversation. How do you press your tinctures when using powders? I just use a clean cloth, you know, clean cotton cloth, and uh, wrap them up and squeeze them. That's how we do it. Um, we have pressing cloths on the website. Go look at them. Uh, what will the price increase please be, please? Um, the price increase will be on January 16th. Is it the 16th or the 15th? 15th at midnight? One five? The, the 15th of January, 2024. The price will be going up. And if I remember right, uh, it'll be about $1,500. Right now it's eight ninety nine. Okay, uh, just as a point of reference, I was looking at cell phones the other day and they were like $1,800. They'll last two years. Okay. A good deer rifle with a decent scope will cost you that much, you know? So, <laughs> and the deer rifle will last longer than the cell phone, just so you know. Anyway, this is a lifetime thing. It's a, it's a tremendous investment. And again, it's still half or a third what it ought to be. It's a half or a third what a lot of the guys are charging whose schools aren't as deep and don't give you lifetime access. Okay. Okay. Brenda says, I just wanted to share how much I love your elderberry kit. Besides being delicious, the packaging is gorgeous. Those elderberry syrup kits are fun, aren't they? Pour a lad and your kids on their way to school. They won't get sick. Uh, we have milk cows and goats. Renee says, please do one on mastitis. Yes, I am an expert on mastitis. Did I tell you that? I had a milk lab and we were doing, some months we were doing over 5,000 samples a month in the milk lab, culturing for what bug it is and then going out and telling the guys what to do about it. I used to do consulting to dairies, goat dairies and cow dairies on how to solve their mastitis problems. Mastitis was one of my things. Okay, uh, how about a video on cat viruses and cat seizures? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, cat seizures is pretty rare. Cat viruses are not. Okay. Um, will the le video lesson be available soon on cancer? The classes are great, Judy says. Yeah. So so I'm redoing the cancer number two. It'll probably end up being cancer number two and number three because it's going to be too long. Um, and then I'll do videos of all of them brand new. Okay. Those will probably be up uh, soon. I was hoping to get those up within the next seven to ten days, but we'll see. Okay. Um, what are those cold herbs? Cold herbs. Oh, cold sore herbs. Is that what you meant? Uh, lemon balm is really good. Calendula is really good. Put the tincture on topically or make a salve. I always just put the tincture on topically. That's fastest. Knocks the herpes virus out. Doesn't cure it forever because herpes is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, but it does knock it out so you don't get that cold sore. Um, also, we have a, a a light, a cold laser on the website that's fabulous for cold sores. 
Um, I don't even remember what it's called. What's the... It's called the lip or the luminescent. Anyway, go to the website and do a a search for lip sore. You'll find it. That's a cool. That's a cool instrument. Evan, my IT guy, my son, like he used to. If he walked past a bar of peanut butter, a jar of peanut butter, he'd get cold sores. I mean, he had horrible cold sore problems, and he started using that thing. He hasn't had a cold sore for forever. Uh, so that's cool. It really does knock it back. Um, I need something for fungi nails. Okay, well, tea tree oil is really good. Black walnut is really good, the tincture, um, topically. And there's some internal things. I have a formula called fungal topical. Look that one up. That one kills things. Um, does the body build up immunity to herb if you take it every day, Vicky asks. That's a really good question. Uh it can build up resistance. I don't know if I'd call it immunity, but it's a really good idea. Some herbs you don't take every day and shouldn't, you know, um, because of how they work and what they do. And we talk about that. If there's an herb you shouldn't be taking long term, we talk about it. Some of them you can take every day as like a tonic vitamin E great thing. I mean, you can take burdock every day and it'd be the best thing in the world for you. Um, I do recommend if people are taking herbs long term for chronic conditions, or for like, you know, if you've got arthritis and you're taking joint support so your knees don't hurt, I do recommend pe people take a day off every couple of weeks to just kind of regroup and let their body clear things out. And then the next day that your body's all excited again. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Um, let's see. All right. Let's see. I All right, we got, uh, I got, we have, okay, here we go. I got ahead of myself. Um, Lynette says, my daughter's watched lots of Doc's YouTube content and done additional research as part of her homeschool science class. You know what? If you have homeschool kids, let them watch the school. I mean, everything in that school is one of the things I really focus on, one of the really important things I'm trying to accomplish is to take complex, important scientific ideas and put them into English. And if you got through high school, you can get through this school, all right? But you'll know stuff that doctors know, all right? Because I, I present it in a way that's comprehensible. And if you have kids that are, you know, over 12 or over 14, over 16, certainly, they can do this school and get a lot of really good benefit from it. Um, Okay, and in fact, I've been talking to my daughter about doing some kind of a homeschool program that people can get, so the kids could even get their own accounts for not very much more money. We're talking about that. So send me an email. Okay, uh, highly recommend the Cup Bite and Sting Kit. I used it a lot this summer on me. <laughs> yeah, the Cup Bite and Sting Kit's great. Um, just Tracy says, I was just told about you at the Nat Grow in Central Texas. Came straight home and found you just in time to catch you live. Great, Tracy. We're glad you're here. Tell Nat Grow thanks. Um, my dog had spinal injury, Julie says, and her back end is paralyzed, but some feeling seems to be coming slowly back. Is there something I can do to help speed up potential healing? Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. If you have spinal injury and paralysis, any progress is good news. Any progress at all. Is good news. Okay. Um, I would look very carefully at herbs like Siberian ginseng and ashwagandha. Um, I would look at teasel. Um, I have a formula called memory and alertness that has most of those in it, not the teasel, but it has most of the other ones in it. Uh, but a lot of the herbs in that memory and alertness formula, and most people just take that so they can, you know, remember their grandkids' name or do good on their college exams. You know, that, I mean, memory and alertness is what it is. Or get past three in the afternoon without a Mountain Dew, you know, because <laughs> some of those herbs are stimulating. But I also use it on stroke victims. I use it on, you know, spinal injury animals like you're talking about. Um, and sometimes it really helps. Sometimes the teasel really helps. We have a whole, 
what did I say, like four or five lessons on the nervous system. The, talk about a lot of things like that. Okay, congestive heart failure in a dog. So congestive heart failure in a dog is when the dog's heart, the walls thin and the heart enlarges a lot, becomes a big old sloppy balloon, and it doesn't pump very good because the muscles are all thin and silly. And so what happens is the blood backs up in the lungs, the dogs have fluid um, weeping into the airways, and now they cough all the time, and eventually they drown. Okay, that's what they die from. They don't want to lay down, because when they lay down, they feel like they're drowning. So is there things we can do for that? There are things we can do for that. Um, the medications are also very good. The, your doctor is going to put them on an allopril and Lasix, right? An allopril makes the heart work better, and the Lasix makes them pee more to get the fluid out of their lungs. But there's all kinds of herbs that'll make you pee more, and there's some pretty good herbs to make your heart bump better. So um, we have a formula called circulatory support. We have a formula called MOPP, M-O-P-P, <laughs> which isn't a claim. It's just uh, some letters I put together. Anyway, that's a diuretic formula. Um, that's what I do with congestive heart failure dogs. Uh, but the medicines work good too, and those herbs can be used with the medicines. Okay. If you're doing both, that's okay in that case. I wouldn't use the MOPP and the Lasix together, but you can use the the heart stuff, uh, some Hawthorne, some Cayenne, some other things like that. Send me an email. I'll send you more information on that. Okay, 200-pound dog with an ear hematoma, redness down but not swelling, maybe due to itchy ears. I used ASA half a tablet. I don't know what that is. Is that a homeopathic or something? I don't know anything about homeopathy and castor oil to cure the mites and reduce swelling. Please help. So the swelling from that is a big old blood clot. There's nothing you can do to that except get the big old blood clot out. Okay. Hematomas in the ear. So a hematoma in the ear is when the dog's, you know, itch, 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 and bangs his ear and breaks little blood vessels, and they leak into this below the skin, and they make a big old blood clot. Okay. And it's always because there's something going on in their ears because their ears itching or something. They have ear mites. They have an ear infection. They have allergies. Um, but yeah, there's things you can use to clean out the ear. Uh, some calendula would be great as a tea. A little bit of tincture of calendula mixed with some water so it's not so strong. That's a good ear cleanse. Um, that fungal topical formula, put a teaspoon of that in two ounces of water and make a solution to clean out ears that works great too and that'll kill bacteria or yeast or mites um, that's a good solution too uh, but if he's got a big old thick fat ear that has to be either drained with a needle or incised with a scalpel and drain stuff out have your vet fix that yeah, they don't have an herb for that sometimes you need a mechanic uh, Angie says, just wanted to want you to know I signed up for your school in 2020 after I broke my back to help with my recovery. I learned so much, and my healing was almost complete. Just some minor numbness. That's so great. So great that it's helping, and you're learning fun things. Um, uh, NQRR says, is there a lesson I can reference for benign essential tremor and what herbs to use? Um not specifically. We have we do talk about some of those tremor issues and Parkinson's and things like that in the uh, nervous system lesson. It would be nervous system number two. Uh, and some of the things that we would do for Parkinson's and some of the other things might help with that. I don't know. I haven't treated that. Okay. So, yeah, young baby says that the 16th is when the price goes up. It is going up to 14.49, 11.59 on January 16th. That's Lucy. Lucy Yum Baby is a company she used to have that made the most adorable, gorgeous wigs for babies. Little hats and wigs, it's so cute. Um, but anyway, Lucy is also a naturopath and an herbalist. <laughs> she runs the whole company. She's the general manager of the whole company. Um, so that's why she knows things like that the price is going to be 14.49 at 11.59 p.m. on January 16th of 2024. So sign up now. Okay, uh, I was really ill in November. I tried many things, finally ordered your flu kit and was able to turn the corner and get well. That's fantastic. We have that uh, respiratory preparedness kit is what she's talking about. If I vacuum seal your herbs as soon as I receive them in the mail, will that keep them longer or should I tincture them? Okay, so Chansey's asking... What's the shelf life of herbs? And the shelf life of dry herbs is a year or two. 
If you vacuum pack them, vacuum pack them, that's a little better, but it's not going to be tons better. Okay. Um, I'm getting a weird thing there. Um, so yeah, I would, if you want to make, and I wouldn't tincture herbs the day before they're going to go bad in a year or two. I would tincture them the day you get them, right? If you're going to spend that kind of money and effort, make a good tincture. Um, so yeah, vacuum packing, uh, will help a little, but it's not going to be a game changer. What can I give a dog that gets car sick? Um, you might try a little bit of ginger. That might help. The most important thing might be to decrease the anxiety of the dog. Sometimes that's why they're getting sick. So time, sometimes a little bit of chamomile. We have a formula called Rest Easy. It's valerian chamomile and skull cap. Sometimes a little bit of that can help calm a dog so he doesn't vomit. Uh, because sometimes the nausea is a nerve thing, not a moving car thing. If it's a moving car thing, ginger's probably better. Um, the main thing is to get them used to it. Uh, and if it's an anxiety thing, you take them out to the car and you sit in the car without the car being on for 10 minutes. Then you go back in the house. And then you go out for a few days with the car on and sit there for 10 minutes. And then you go around the block and come back. And then you go around the block twice and come back. You know, sort of incrementally get them used to being in the car and having it not be a big deal. Sometimes that does the trick. Okay. Um, I've thought of... In Isongba French press for tinctures, what do you think? I don't know what an Isongba French press is. I don't know what that is, Ruth. Uh, what's good for cold sores? Lemon balm topically is great. That little cold lip sore treatment device we have on the website is great. Calendula tincture is great. Lots of guys like to kill cold sores. Um, what would I do for an ulcer in the colon? Well, the first thing I would do is go to lower digestive system lesson three probably three or two, because uh, we talk about ulcers a lot. Um, there are herbs that can help with ulcers. Uh, I would, so basically when you got an ulcer, you got a bacterial infection and you have, uh, you need to help the healing and you need to soothe it, right? And so herbs like marshmallow, herbs that accelerate healing, like calendula, which is also an antibiotic, which is something we need. Um, Herbs like spirea are good for ulcers, which doesn't make any sense at all because it's like aspirin on a stick. Why does that fix your ulcer? Well, it does other things too. Um, comfrey, topically or internally, can help with things like that. Uh, shoot me an email. I'll give you some specifics. But that is something we talk a lot about in the school. At the beginning of the video, you showed three things to enroll at different prices. Does the 899 school have everything? What are the other two about? No, it doesn't have everything. Homestead Academy is the platform for a lot of schools. The Homegrown Herbalist School that you're paying $8.99 for gets you into that. But it also includes everything that's in that second school, which is the When There Is No Doctor course. The When There Is No Doctor course is just a smaller part of the Homegrown Herbalist School. But the Homegrown Herbalist School is vastly better. It has all the search functions. It has the forum. I'm adding to it all the time. The When There's No Doctor thing sort of a static little smaller guy. Um, and if you have signed up, by the way, for the When There's No Doctor thing, let me know. I'll give you a discount on the big school because you've already paid for part of it. Okay. But no, that enrollment fee won't get you into, you know, if we have a, if somebody else puts up a school on gardening or on, you know, belly dancing or whatever, uh, that's a different school. You'll have to enroll in that school separate. Okay. All right. Um, I don't plan on doing a school on belly dancing. I've, I've thought about it, but I don't know where to buy the little simple things you put on your fingers, and I'm not a great dancer, so I probably won't do that school. Okay. Um, you're a wealth of information. Thanks for sharing. God bless you. Thank you, Gina. God bless you, too. Is there anything good for dry eye? Um, I have a formula called eye support that helps a little bit. Um, there's also some things you can make as a tea, you know, and do topically on your eye. Uh, plantain is good. Chamomile might be good. Um, Anyway, Queen of Hearts, are there any classes on mushrooms and healing abilities? You know, almost none. I, I'm not a mushroom guy, and I ought to be. I talk about reishi, and I talk about some of the others. Uh, some of them are really great, but that's something I need to do more on. I need to do more classes on that. Um, there really are some phenomenal medicinal mushrooms. Okay, I'm a little—we uh, talk about shaga. I use that all the time. Uh, 
so there's you know there's a handful of them I use a lot and talk a lot about, but uh, there's also um, a lot of them I don't talk about that I should. So we'll get into that. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm tr I got scooted down again. Okay, do you have any info on Australian snake bites, specifically brown snakes? I know the venom attacks the nervous system. Uh, I don't know what a brown snake is. I'm guessing it's an elapid, which is the same family that mambas and sea snakes and cobras are in. That's what most of them are. Uh, yeah, we talk about that in the venom and sting lecture. Um, I would use the same formula that I'm using on the uh, on the pit viper bites. Um, a lot of the effects will be similar. Th their venom is very different in some ways, but in some ways, the things in that formula would still be helpful. Um, but yeah, we do talk about elapids in the venom and sting lecture. Um, okay, can a chicken with a broken leg be helped with comfrey? A dog tried to eat our chicken. Well, broken legs are mechanical things. Unless you had a way to, oh, thank you. Unless you had a way to, you know, fix it mechanically, which is pretty hard on a chicken, uh, and probably too expensive for a chicken. Um, probably not. If the leg's actually broken, you probably. Uh, the other thing you can do with that, there's an herb formula called shake and bake, and those herbs are good on chicken. Um, but <laughs> yeah, broken legs are hard particularly on chickens. Okay. Um, is a firm the only option for making payments? Uh, well, there's credit cards. You can get a credit card and they'll be happy to let you make payments. A firm's the only option that we're connected with. Um, okay. Beach Lady says, are you selling seeds? We do sell seeds now and then. Um, you just have to watch. We don't have lots of seeds. We're trying to figure out how to do that, like from somebody else that can produce the seeds. There's some really good seed producers out there that I'm acquainted with that we could do that with. We're just trying to figure that out. We probably will be doing that. Okay. Um, Teresa says, I use comfrey as a salve for back pain and other joint pain. Yeah, comfrey, in addition to healing stuff, has some great anti-inflammatory properties. Absolutely. Um, anything for pericardial effusion? Probably not. Probably not that one. That's a bad one. Um, Natasha says, love your school. Will you offer support for your students wanting to move into com clinical herbalism or business advice? Yeah, absolutely. We, we talk about it in the school, in the, in the ethics and legalities, but we're thinking very hard as soon as my life settles a little bit, um, about doing some intern programs and letting people come and do some cool stuff. Uh, that's sort of still in the works. What part of the circulatory formula gives the woody taste? I don't know. There's several things in that one that don't taste great. Um, <laughs> I don't know who's woody. Um, do you have any lessons or videos specifically on long COVID? I have had significant fatigue for three years. I have a blog article on long COVID that you ought to go read. It's called uh, COVID Beat You Up, Now What? Go to homegrownerbalist.net read that article. Uh, there's a lot of good ideas there for that. Do you have lessons in parasite loads and treatment of goats and sheep? Uh, I do have lessons in the GI tract, in the digestive system lessons. We talk about parasites. I'm going to do some more animal-specific parasite lessons because they're a little bit more involved with parasites than humans are. Um, but we do have a formula called worms that works pretty good. Okay, if you use the affirm option, the first charge isn't for 30 days. That's that's right. She's talking to Ellen. Patty's talking to Ellen. Um, can you take them with medicines in people? Can you take herbs and medicines? We talked about that when I was talking about the school. Sometimes you can, sometimes you dare not. Okay, and don't ever without talking to somebody that understands both. Okay, but that's one of the big things we're doing in the school right now. We're creating a huge database of lessons that talks about pharmaceutical interactions with herbs. And nobody's doing that. I promise you, there's not an herb school in the world that's beginning to broach that subject. 
because they don't have the, the background. And so I, I have a doctorate in veterinary medicine. I know a lot about drugs. My son-in-law, Brandon Rose, Dr. Brandon Rose, has a PhD in physiology. He knows a lot about drugs, studies all that stuff. And we're, and as a researcher, professional researcher, we're writing those lessons as we speak. In fact, he sent me a bunch of notes today and we were collaborating on a lesson just this morning. Uh, so that will be a resource that you can search. You can put a word, you can put amlodipine in the search engine and it'll pull up that database, that lesson and say, don't mix it with this and that and the other thing. It's okay with these. Don't use that. Okay. So that you can make safer decisions. All right. Okay. Um, if we have questions during the course, well, will there be a way to ask you questions? Absolutely. There's three magic ways to ask questions in the course. The first is at the bottom of every lesson, there's a little place where you can ask questions specifically about that lesson. And it takes it to a special place on the forum just about that specific lesson. And I answer those questions. Or you can just go to the forum and do it yourself there. Or you can send me an email. Or you can call me. Okay. When you're in the school, you kind of have the I can bug duck anytime I want card. And so, yeah, there's ways to get information. And I'm very anxiously engaged in wanting to help people with questions. Um, I haven't been on the forum for a couple of weeks because my life's been insane. But I'm going to be on there tomorrow, and I'll probably be on there for four hours answering questions. Okay? So, <laughs> so there we go. My Pomeranian keeps having seizures. Is there something I can give him? You know what? I've done some herbal stuff with seizure dogs. You know, sometimes passion flower helps. Sometimes skull calf helps. There's some things that can help. None of the herbal stuff works as well as the drugs. Uh, the medications for some dogs for that problem, the medications are the only thing that can keep them having any quality of life. Okay. Is there hope in getting off diltiasm and lisinopril for AFib? Um, you know, there probably isn't because that's an electrical problem. Atrial fibrillation is an electrical problem in the heart where the, the electrical nervous system of the heart isn't working right. Um, I, I doubt it. Uh, I mean, if it was the apocalypse, I'd say, you know, take this or that. But um, there probably isn't something better or as good as those two pharmaceuticals for that specific problem. Okay. Shirley says grape seed oil is great for nail fungus. That's right. Uh, okay. B. Heck says you used to talk about doing the school with a friend in the videos. Is that still a thing? That hasn't been a thing for many, many years. Uh, it was called the Study Buddy Program, and I used to, I used to do that. Um, I started out for spouses, you know, because they're. I mean, your husband's going to do it over your shoulder anyway. Why not give him his own account? Um, and then people didn't have a spouse, so they wanted to do it with their sister, and then they wanted to do it with the neighbor lady, and then they wanted to do it with anybody they could find, and it ended up just being a 50% off coupon for people, and they weren't using it as a study buddy thing. Um, and so one of the times when we raised, <clears throat> instead of raising the price, we just eliminated the study buddy thing. We're not doing it anymore. Um, it was being taken advantage of and, and not used for its purpose. Uh, so, yeah, we haven't done that for a lot of years. Okay, I'm a pre as Betty Beach Lady says, I'm interested in the affiliate program, but I'm not interested in being connected to PayPal. Are there other options for receiving payments? Um, there aren't right now. So the affiliate program is, you can be a an affiliate. You don't have to be a student to be an affiliate, in fact. Um, you can be an affiliate for the, for the just an affiliate. If you have a, a desire to share, maybe you want to pay for your own school by helping other people get into it. That's okay. The commission on a school is 20% if you're an affiliate. Okay, so uh, any of you that are already students and are affiliates, you're kind of, you ought to be telling your friends to sign up because uh, it's inexpensive right now and then maybe they'll do that and make you some money. Um, anyway, I, I don't have a way to do it besides PayPal. Um, and PayPal isn't perfect and they think some things I don't think, you know. Uh, they won't let you pay for your deer rifle through PayPal, and I think that's stupid. But I don't care. They're allowed to be stupid. It's their business thing. They're not the way they want to run it. Um, I don't get hung up on, and I don't know what, you know, if there's any other bad, evil thing PayPal's in. I, I really don't know. I really don't know anything about that. Uh, that's how the affiliate program's structured. The We don't create the affiliate program. We're using another service to 
manage all that, and we don't have the resources to manage it ourselves. They only use PayPal, so that's the way to do it. Um, I would say go ahead and get the PayPal account and get your payments through them, and every time they send you money, stick your tongue out at them and go to the bank. <laughs> that's what I would do. Okay. Um, I have myocarditis. What can I do? So myocarditis is an infection, inflammation of the heart. Uh, there are anti-inflammatory herbs and antibiotic herbs you can use. Send me an email because you're probably on some meds. Okay. Is there anything to help with neuropathy in the legs and feet due to diabetes? Absolutely. Uh, ginkgo is really, really helpful sometimes, as are other herbs. Another thing that's really helpful is uh, alpha-lipoic acid, which is an amino acid. It's like a vitamin. It's not medicine. Um, alpha, like A-L-P-H-A, like alpha, the letter, hyphen, lipoic, L-I-P-O-I-C, alpha lipoic acid. You can buy it anywhere that sells vitamins and things. Sometimes that really helps, uh, peripheral neuropathy in diabetics. But ginkgo is good too. And there's some other herbs that are good too. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with POTS? And do you discuss in the course? I don't know what POTS stands for. Uh, I don't know. I use POTS to make uh, oil infusions. Does that count? Okay. Beach Lady, Shervin doesn't like PayPal either. Okay. I don't like PayPal either, but I don't have anybody else I can do it with. So that's what we do. Okay. Do any herbs work on clearing cataracts? Uh, not really for an adult. I have cleared up cataracts, juvenile cataracts, uh, on a couple of cases in puppies uh, that came on very abruptly in a puppy. But old cataracts in old folks, um, you need a mechanic for that. Okay. So what would you recommend for a large nasal polyp? That's, again, that's a mechanical problem. You're going to have to get that cut out. I don't have anything that make that go away herbally. Um, can you freeze dry herbs and keep all the quality in them? That's a good question Shannon's asking. Freeze drying, uh, some herbs don't like heat, like anybody in the mint family. If there's a lot of volatile oils, essential oils in the plant as part of the medicine, you don't want to get them hot. And freeze dryers get hot sometimes. Most freeze dryers can... You can control the temperatures, and if it's not getting over 100 degrees or so, you're probably okay. If it's getting much higher than that, you're starting to beat the herbs up. Some herbs could care less if it gets hot, okay? Um, but it depends plant by plant. The other thing is, even if you fry, freeze-dry the herbs, honestly, I don't think they're going to last more than a couple of years. And they say, oh, but food lasts 25 years if you freeze-dry it. Absolutely it does, because fats and proteins aren't very complicated. You know, your refried beans and your mashed potatoes and your pork chops aren't going to change very much in 25 years because the chemistry of them isn't that complicated. But the alcubin in plantain, that's not going to last six months, even if you do freeze dry it. Okay. And so the medicinal properties of a plant can be long-term preserved in alcohol. And some of them have very long shelf lives and you could freeze dry them and that'd be great. But a lot of them, it wouldn't be any better. Okay. So I, I don't see freeze drying as a vastly better option than just air drying herbs. Um, it does It is a little better. And if you want to do the work and spend the money to get it done, your herbs will be a little better for a couple of years and maybe a couple of years longer than usual. But I'm not going to think that 25 years from now they're going to be just as good as they were the day I freeze dried them. My, my refried beans will. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh, let's see. Can I get a scholarship to the school? We don't have anything official in, in the works right now. Um, we've been talking a little bit about that. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Are fresh herbs more potent for tinctures, for tincture making than dry herbs? Uh, fresh herbs in some cases are better. Um, in some cases, they make the tincture not nearly as good because there's too much water in the herb. I use dry herbs for everything personally. Um, but there are some herbs that the fresh herbs just as, you know, has low enough water content that it doesn't matter and it's a little better. Yeah. Um, but I honestly, I use dry for everything. Uh, Teresa says ginger helped her dog not get car sick. So that's good. 
Um, let's see. Creatures great and small says, I encourage you to integrate medicinal mushrooms in your practice. Me too. I've been encouraging myself to do that for a long time. <laughs> I do use some, but I need to be using more. Uh, herbs that can replace steroids. Um, depends why you're using the steroids. Uh, I have a lot of anti-inflammatory herbs that can be just as good for, you know, joint pain and stuff. If it's autoimmune disease, that's a whole different project we talk deeply about in the school. And I just can't give you a quick, yeah, take this one because it's a big project to get resolve that and, and manage it. But it is something we talk a lot about in the school. We have a whole lesson on autoimmune disease. Um, okay. So, uh, RVing the dream, 60-year-old lady wants to give the course to her son in her will. Nope, we're not doing that. I have lots of 80-year-old ladies that are in the school. Um, so, yeah, nope, it's, a, it's, it's for you. Um, I have a male cat who keeps urinating by my front door. He's, he's, was, since he was little, not every day, but often. I think it's a behavioral thing. Uh, it is a behavioral thing. He's marking his territory. He's telling other kitties to stay out of his house because he loves his mother, and that's the way it works. Um, with cats, rule of thumb for litter boxes, sometimes cats don't pee because they don't like the litter box. Sometimes it's because it doesn't smell good. Uh, so if you have, sometimes it's because it smells like somebody else. They don't like that. Sometimes it's because they had a bladder infection once and it hurt in the litter box, so they're not going in there ever again. So I recommend with cats, the rule of thumb is you have one more box than you have cats. So if you have two cats, you have three boxes, and you throw the box away every six months or so and get a new one, all right? Um, other than that, a lot of that's behavioral, and it's hard to manage otherwise. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, Earthy Artist says that her dog didn't like the car, and or his dog, I don't know if he's a his or her. He started giving him a treaty when he got in the car, and he liked it, right? Perfect. Uh, tinnitus. Uh, there are herbs that can help with tinnitus. Um, go to the website and look at inner ear and balance. Those are the herbs I use for tinnitus. Sometimes it helps, not always. Lots of weird things can cause tinnitus. The Resimax tuner, which I also sell on the website, sometimes really helps with tinnitus. Does calendula help with staph infections? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I've cleared up MRSA infections with, with herbs, one of which was calendula in that formula. I have a formula called Bug Buster that has antibiotic herbs in it that I've had good luck with. Okay. Um, we're almost done, and then we're going to be done because Evan's tapping his watch. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, postural orthostatic hypotension. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay, that's what POTS is. Sorry. Um, send me an email. That's that's longer. Um Upper respiratory in cats, that's really hard. Uh, send me an email on that one. It's usually because they have a herpes virus. It gets complicated. Send me an email. I'll go through that. Um, I'll write a thing on this, that in the school, too. If you're in the school, poke me, and I'll... In fact, I'm going to write it down right here. URI cats. What else did we say? So many water mastitis. All right. Oh, hot spots. I'm doing on hot spots. I'll do that, too. Okay. Um... Okay. Anything for glaucoma? Ginkgo biloba can sometimes help with glaucoma. I have a formula called eye support that can be supportive. Again, everything I've said tonight, by the way, don't take anything if you're taking pharmaceuticals without talking to somebody, okay? And don't take anything if you're pregnant or nursing without talking to somebody, all right? Um, I harvested yarrow leaves this fall. Are they as potent as harvesting leaves and flowers early in the growing season? Are yarrow leaves alone as good as the flowers? The leaves are almost as good as the flowers, number one. And if they looked happy and vibrant and green and good, they're fine. If they were starting to look beat up like they thought winter was coming, don't harvest them. Buy some. Okay. Uh, harvest dry freeze dryer has a setting for temperature. Yeah, fabulous. That's what you do. Okay. That's what we do. We have one. Herbs to help rheumatoid arthritis, that's another autoimmune disease, and it's complicated. Yes, uh, there are herbs you can do for the inflammation. There are herbs you can, and things you can do, some of which are herbs, for the autoimmune issues there. Um, 
we talk a lot about it in the school, but that's a big topic. That's not a that's not a quickie. Shoot me an email. Um, dog's glaucoma. Uh, that's another one with. That's another one that's. If he's on meds, he says he's on meds, so I'd have to know what meds he's on before I can make a request. I live in Denmark. Can I get in? Absolutely. Uh, I have uh, students from Denmark. Nope, that's not true. She moved. No, she was from the Netherlands. I have a Denmark one too. Anyway, yeah, I have students all over Europe. Absolutely, you can get in. I have students in South Africa and Australia and New Zealand and everywhere. I have students in Israel. Okay, you bet. Denmark's good. Okay. Um, Crohn's disease. There are some things you can do to manage Crohn's. Um, there isn't anything you can cure it with, uh, but there are some things. Send me an email, Teresa, and we'll talk to you about some things you can do. Uh, okay, so Half Acre Home said, I'm wondering if you could talk about what kind of practice we could be capable of after completing all the materials, what range of illnesses, herbs, et cetera, and what types of illnesses. Well, you know what? Um, it depends how engaged you want to be and how focused you want to be on your learning. But the information you need to do about anything is in the school. And if you're a student and enrolled in the school and you got a weird case come up, go to the form and let's talk about it. Shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. We'll do a lesson on it. You know, I mean, herbal medicine can be used for all kinds of things. And your level of capacity and competence and courage is based on your experience and your information. And that's a personal thing. But yeah, everything that I'm doing, you could do with herbs if you, you know, focused on the school and learned the stuff. You really could. Okay. Um, okay, UTI and dogs, same as UTI and humans, uh, diuretics and antibiotic herbs. I have a formula called uh, UTI on the website. Look at those. And that stands for uh, urinary tonic intervention. It doesn't stand for any other UTI thing. I don't know what that would mean. Anyway, <laughs> look at that. Um, okay. Is your website the best place to sign up? Uh, yeah, just go to the website, click on the thing that says Our School, and that'll show you how to sign up. Um, he says, thanks, Doc and Evan, for everything. Uh, Hashimoto's, again, that's an autoimmune disease. Don't take kelp if you have Hashimoto's, but uh, send me an email. That's, a, that's complicated. We have a whole lesson on autoimmune stuff in the school, at least one. But that's a big deal. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, yeah, there's herbs for that too. Milk thistle, um, burdock. There's some other things. We talk about that. We have a whole lesson on the liver. Uh, we talk about that in more detail. Um, okay, Dorothea. Hey, Dorothea, how are you? We know Dorothea. Um, I made a tea out of mullein leaf and put it in a diffuser, which I sat next to my coughing cat, and she recovered quickly. <laughs> no more cough. Yeah, the steam from mullein is almost as good as the mullein. People smoke it too for their medicinal effects. It doesn't have any fun herb effects, uh, but mullein in a steam, you know, if you put a towel over your head and suck the steam, that helps your lungs too with a cough. Good for her. Uh, okay, thanks and thanks and thanks. All right. Uh, anything good for ringworm? Look at the fungal topical formula. Asthma, we have a formula called asthma, A-Z-M-A. Look at the herbs in that. There's a lot of herbs that are bronchodilators and can help you breathe. Uh, we have a whole lesson on that. Okay. Um, okay. I think we ran out of questions. Ha! What do you know? <laughs> we ran out of questions. If your question didn't get answered, because I'm scrolling through these 100 miles an hour trying to let people go home, um, send me an email, and I would be delighted. Um, I'm Doc Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. Our next webinar will be cases for, for the students. So we would love to have you uh, join us on that journey. Uh, it's lifetime enrollment. It's absurdly inexpensive until January 16th. After that, it's quite inexpensive. So we encourage you to take the plunge. Now's the time, lifetime enrollment, and uh, 
we'd love to learn with you and teach you great stuff. I'm Doc Jones from the Homegrown Herbal School of Botanical Medicine. Have a great night.